Hello. Um, I guess I'll start a talk right now. Um, so before getting started, may I know how many of you are Android developers? Could you raise your hand? Awesome. This is what I want. Uh, how many of you are server-side developers? More than Android developers. <laughs> how many of you do both? One person. Nice. Two. OK, so I introduce myself. My name is Nevin. Um, so today I'm talking about calling server-side development, mostly using KTOR. Uh, so let's begin. So the, it, the agenda, agenda has two parts. One is KTOR, the other is front Android to back end. So I'm going to talk about a little bit, like for, for those Android developers probably not th that familiar with um, back ends, but you already know Colin, you probably want to add something to your uh, code. So first thing is KTOR. KTOR is very easy to learn, easy to use. It's, a, it's both client side and server side. So what that means is you can actually add KTOR to your Android application, but I never tried that before. <laughs> According to the official document, uh, the reason why you want to do that is you can have the benefit of cross-platform. So you have uh, OKTG, OKHTTP, or um, so you have your own uh, HTTP library, right? But you want to, when you do cross-platform, you want to, you don't want to change your code. You have if you have KTOR client on above, you don't have to change the uh, uh, underneath implementation. So KTOR has features and middleware. Um, so how many of you have written uh, Node.js using Express? Please raise your hand. So it's very similar uh, uh, concept. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, OS2. Uh, I think all of you have known OS2. Um, I'm going to uh, use Firefox account, for example. Uh, and then I'll talk about some nice architecture things because if you are a senior developer and you don't have architecture in your code, you are not professional, right? <laughs> so I will try to do that. Uh, just uh, say, um, just wanted to let you know, I just started back-end development uh, for two months ago. <laughs> so it will be very funny uh, for a newbie to talk, uh, to talk about a topic like this. But I think I have a lot of learnings from that, so I want to share with you guys. So this is uh, uh, like a ranking of a web framework. Spring is definitely the hottest one. And now we see KTOR about like 60, uh, like top 40% or something. So it's racing up. So similar to Spring, uh, how many of you haven't used any Spring at all? Haven't, you, didn't, you don't use any Spring. Everybody use Spring, okay, cool. So KTOR has start similar stuff, have KTOR.io, start, start at KTOR.io. So when you start uh, first start doing, you found that we uh, KTOR support uh, calling DSL project, um, but I will not suggest you to use that because uh, the compiler um, has some troubles dealing with some uh, annotation processing. So probably don't use, still use stick to Groovy, please. Um, <laughs> so I, I got some trouble, but we could talk about it later. So it also support uh, like. Um, Templates, features. So templates, you can use uh, templates that you are used to. Uh, you can use uh, ThemeLeaf. You can use uh, FreeMaker. Uh, you can use uh, H the Colin DSL, um, HTML DSL to let you build type safe uh, HTML. For example, you don't, you will never forget about the closing tag. For example, uh, you will check at compile time for you. Also, you have support client side. So we, we're not going to cover that part, but just let you know it has this support. Or you can use the JetBrains plugin. OK? So if you use Jet, uh, IntelliJ plugin, uh, you, can, you will have a KTOR selection when you create a project. So this is, where I, this is how I get started. Um, I think, OK, I can create any project uh, and learn from that. So I do it, uh, and then I forgot the auto sync the import, uh, the auto, uh, automatic import. So this is very important in Android world. You have to manually sync your Gradle uh, after you change your build script, right? But in uh, server-side world, they have this awesome feature. So this is the groove, uh, the Gradle script that every Android, Android developer used to uh, look at it. So it's a little bit different because the plugin doesn't have Android world in it. It's only Kotlin. Uh, it has application because that's where you uh, that the IDE knows when the main uh, main func uh, function is, so it can get started. And also, it has some dependency of um, a lot of you are familiar with calling standard libraries. Uh, you add so it will add Netty uh, low back, but but Netty is the most important thing. It's like a, a servlet container. So after you done that, you can add your first or my first server. So I. This is come with the uh, 
uh, library, uh, the, the project that created from the website. You add print line, say hi, and then you run start. Then you have a server running. It's that simple. And then you can add server backend developer at your resume, right? Using Kotlin, just one line. And then you start it, you, you can see the console, say hi. And you can have a server running at local host. But the server doesn't, if a server doesn't return anything, it just runs the push, print down some log locally, doesn't mean anything. So we want to add some routing. So routing is the, is the way that we define how the server dispatch this web request to some kind of controller, right? So routing here, um, I don't know what it is. I just copy the simple code. So I say routing, and I some I some something called get, and then I say call that respond respond tag text. So normally we have response and request. So every HTTP server run, works like that, right? Uh, Ktor do, does a little bit different. So you can use call to access both request and response. So here I use calls to respond text and say hello. So I go to the web server and say hello. So I, I start my first um, web server uh, and 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 the a and the M, and, and the endpoint like web endpoint, but uh, an endpoint is not professional. A REST API is more <laughs> is more professional, right? So, um, but the REST API just replen uh, just return plain text. It's not cool. So I want to return uh, something called uh, a, a pojo. So if I want to return a pope JSON, what do I do? So I create a class and I return the class, um, I write some. So if you're already familiar with Spring, this is come, like if you use REST controller, it should uh, appear automatically, automatically. But in Ktor, Ktor it doesn't have that. You say, I don't know how to map uh, this class to, uh, to, my out, 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 uh, like, to my output. So how do I do it? So you have to install a something called content negotiation. Um, so, I don't know what content negotiation <laughs> is actually. I just, every time I wrote some, uh, I want to roll an app, like talk to the server, uh, server developer say, hey, you add this in your header file, uh, then your HTTP, HTTP header. So I add accept and say application JSON, uh, say Q something. I don't know what that is. Uh, but I did a, good, a little bit Googling about, okay, this is what I, I request the server, if you can give me a JSON, and then it will be best if or not. You can give me an XML, XML or XYE format. Um, so the Q here is the weight. So I have to, I have to, I have to add this feature to my Ktor server. How do I do? Um, so I add one line saying install a feature called content negotiation. So feature is a, a very key concept in concept in Ktor. Saying um, I want this feature, and then I say I want. Like using Jackson to do the serialization, a uh, deserialization for me. Okay, so uh, that's it. And then I rerun the server again. I got the pojo that I, that, I, that I want. Okay, so what is f um, so? Uh, this is Postman. Uh, in case, so I, firstly, I don't know. I haven't, haven't, haven't used Postman for a long time, but now they have workspace. And you can have a set of environments. So you can switch between environments. You can change the variables in it. You can, um, basically, basically, you don't need anything. You don't need zero, or you don't need Android web view, or you don't need write actual code to uh, work with your backends. Um, this is a very good tool, uh, very nice tool. So uh, getting parameters, also important. Um, because the server, if a REST endpoint doesn't get any parameter, it doesn't mean anything, right? So, so here I said, I want to say hello Nevin. If I specify Nevin here, I want to return hello Nevin. What I do is I use the call to uh, SS request and get query parameters. Um, so very simple. So I'm going to talk about features. So we add the feature called content negotiation. This is the first feature we added. What other features? Um, uh, Ktor provide. It has compression, it has uh, status page, and it has like metrics, and it has logging, call logging to log all the call, call ID, and you have FreeMaker. If you want to use FreeMaker to render, render, render the templates, or you can use Steamleaf, or use, um, yeah, this is not a feature, but 
anyway, it's similar stuff. But <clears throat> so I want to say it's a very easy way to extend um, KTOR. We're not going to write, talk about how to write a custom feature today. Um, this is something I'm also learning right now. But basically, you can you can uh, add features if you want. So I'm going to talk a jump through Firefox account a little bit because I want to show another feature called OAuth, so authentication feature. So authentication is very important when you when you write the server ad, server uh, backend, right? So this is still Firefox account still uh, like internal only. But we are going to uh, let other people to use it as the third party uh, identity provider soon. Um, we have API document, we have uh, blogs about it. Currently, we only support all to uh, authentication grant type, so the, the, the most complex one. We have three endpoints authorization to kick off the flow, token to, adjust, to change, exchange your token, and a profile to get users' emails. Um, probably will not give you the sync data, the bookmark. We don't have plan for that. <laughs> but, uh, you can get use you can use Firefox account as a uh, identity provider. So we do some checks. If the user used a malicious email, we won't let let them create a Firefox account. So probably that would help protect your uh, backend as well. So we support like uh, authentication authorized authentication the the, the green type. So how to edit? How to edit in O2 um, uh, in Ktor? So we have make a setting file. So we name the setting file uh, name FX, FXA. We specify the authorization endpoints, the your uh, SS token token endpoint, the client ID, the secrets. You will get those when you register an endpoint, a, a Firefox account uh, client, and then um, some the scope that you want the S the to the user to give you SS, and then you say install authentication feature, and we have. Uh, like a DSL saying, I'm going to use FXA. I'm going, I'm going to call it, call it FXA. And the uh, client, I'm going to use HT, the, the HTTP client. I'm going to use the Apache one. And the URL provider um, is the uh, redirect that when you, you use to register Firefox account um, as, a, as a, the identity provider. And then when you use it in your routing, you all the routes you want to protect by the OS2, you just say authenticate and then wrap it as and read your endpoint in it. So it looks kind of magical for me at the first glance. Like a lot of things are like, what what is this? It's like it's not it's not Java, it's not it's not code. It's it's like <laughs> like a strange language. So but actually under the hood is all Java. So the magic is extension function. I'm not sure if we have time that for that, but if we had time we can um like dig into it, how to write a DSL using Kotlin, uh, how does that work? And what is, what is Kotlin uh, KTOR different uh, compared to Spring? So <clears throat> now I'm going to write a new endpoint called news. So what I want to do is I want to get the news data from IS, a bunch of ISIS feed. Like when user come to me, they don't come to ISIS feed, they just come to me. I'll fetch the ISIS feed for them and do some curation here. So what I do is I have a new endpoint called get uh, news. And uh, then I, if a user doesn't give me the parameter that I want, I show some, I tell them uh, for something, your fault. Or if I something, my fault. Or I just give them the data it was to something. So this is the code I wrote. So you can find this retrofit. So the code architecture is very similar to Android, right? So you have, you can create a, a, a retrofit using like all, this, all the code we use for Android. So the, the good thing about Ktor is that you can very easily share code between uh, the Android app. So probably one day I'll do code sharing for, the, for Android and for server side. I think one thing we can definitely share is the Pojo or DTO files, right? So those files are almost the same. And, and I can, when the, when the Android developer want to ask me about why the server give me uh, four or three or four one? I can just you just check the server code. Okay, you can read it. So I think the bad thing is now our Android, all our Android developer can now uh, read backend code and they don't need documentation. <laughs> okay, so the way I provide um, uh, the client is the retrofit and um, repository service. Um, I'm using a singleton, so you can use uh, dependency injection. Um, but I haven't figured out how to use, use it with Dagger. Uh, Dagger, you need a class, right? But 
all the files we saw are all extension functions. How do you inject to an extension function? I don't know. I don't, haven't figured out that out that yet. But I think probably I need to initialize the object, um, the dependency graph first, and then put it in the the, the extension extension function. I'm not sure, but we'll see. Uh, you have a uh, Colin has a suggested recommended um, dependency injection called um, Colin, I think. Yeah. So. We'll do it to the, if we have time, we can do a comparison. So this is my architecture right now. So I'm, it, we only have, we only passed like 20 minutes and we already go gone through a half of the our talk. So the, uh, this is the architecture that I want to talk about. So in the, it, this is copied from Spring. <laughs> so <laughs> Spring has a controller, uh, Spring has a client, client calls to uh, outbound, outbound HTTP request and re, has a repository, have domain, uh, Android call use case, similar stuff. In Ktor, it has something called routes. So if you write uh, Spring, I think um, you have controllers, right? Uh, and you, in get mapping or uh, you or post mapping, whatever, you try to put the, all the controller in one file in blah 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 controller, all the uh, API endpoints together in one file, right? Uh, I sometimes have problem like this feature is a main feature, but is related to the publisher uh, controller. But it's also the admin controller. So what should I put? Where should I put them? Uh, Ktor give a very good uh, separation of concern. Like the way you define route is separate with the way that you define controllers. So <laughs> you can define the route in some some part and put your controller somewhere else. So we are going to talk about it right now. So, so the the news um, the news endpoint just like I saw that I wrote before is like this: have a news and then do something else. So everything you can imagine, this main file is going to be very long, have a lot of methods, right? And the method content is very long. So what should I? How should I ex extract? I can use routing. So too fast. Sorry. So firstly, um, this is the, it. Would be nice if I if it looked like this, right? Very small, very concise. So what I do, I like, I, so see, there's a hello function here. So actually I want the original hello method and the body goes to the hello method. So what I do is I create another file called hello route or something. I can name it whatever I want. I use the extension function to say hello and then put my method here. And then I can call the method um, in my routing. So routing will be, uh, routing will be my, um, receiver, right? Oh, sorry. So that's it used. So Ktor used extension functions to um, to make this happen. Oh, okay. We have to. So after we complete the the the, the backends, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any use if we, if we doesn't like. Put publish somewhere, right? So we use Google App Engine here. Uh, basically, there are two keywords: scalable and serverless. Okay, uh, it only supports Java 8 and JD9. Where is that? Uh, Java 11 is the beta, and you can use Netty if you want. So it doesn't come with the container. So, uh, but it's in beta. You can use it. Uh, here's a here's a link. Uh, like a build a mobile but mo mobile backend service, for example. So. I'm an Android developer, right? <laughs> so the reason why I, uh, that I want to write backend code is that I want to write something for my Android app, for example, the ISS feed, right? So uh, I use the Google App Engine to uh, host my Kater uh, server. Actually, I use Spring. <laughs> so, so there was a decision that made that, okay, we, we need to go to Spring because uh, more people use Spring is more mature. But when I use Spring, I find I have a problem that there are too many examples. Some ask me to do this way, some people ask me to do that way. You can do configuration this way, you can, you can do configuration that way. You can use YAML file, you can use property files. <laughs> so I was so confused. But Ktor is very simple because you are limited. <laughs> so um, yeah, either way, so everything has trade off. Okay, so the architecture is very simple. So basically I have a very large Firebase architecture. I use Firebase to do authentication. I use Firestore to store my NoSQL database. I use um, remote config um, 
So everything is in Firebase. So the only thing that Google Engine uh, Google, uh, it was function as well. So you can use, you can right now use Kotlin to write call functions, but it's also in, I think it's, it's in beta, so you have to request to join the program. Um, so you, I wrote the backend uh, using App Engine. So if you want to try App Engine using Ktor, don't follow Google's document. It will kill you because you use like you use Serverlet. You think so? I firstly start thinking, oh, Serverlet is similar to Ktor, probably. Um, so I can adjust a little, a little things. I can it can work. No, you won't. So follow the Ktor doc. Ktor doc has a very good example how to deploy on uh, K, on Google App Engine. Just a few lines of commands, and then you can deploy to Google App Engine. It's very easy. Okay. So if you want to do it manually, this is how I do it. <laughs> So firstly, you set up the uh, class pass. So you, if you add a class pass, you can have a bunch of plugins, right? And plug the, what the plugins do is, is to create a bunch of great tasks for you. For example, deploy to, um, you don't want to write the deployment code itself, right? Uh, I run App Engine locally using an emulator. Uh, so you want to check, test your Firestore roles, for example. So you can still keep the application plugin, right? Um, so you use the application plugin to run to find the main functions, but actually, if you run, if you in, if you add the Google App Engine's plugin, you don't have to because it has it has a local uh, like App Engine run, and remember to deploy to WAR. Uh, use uh, use the uh, WAR uh, deploy. Uh, sorry, artifact because uh, you want to deploy to Google App Engine, right? Don't forget. And um, yeah, the main class this 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 property is only required by um, by the application plugin. Yeah, and add the uh, serverlet and jetty here. The reason why you need jetty is that you need to let J Google App because I, remember I said Google App Engine only support jetty, so jetty jetty um, uh, is you you will see the code later. Okay, so that's the main, where the main function is useful. And in the, if you see the Kator um, Google App Engine example, uh, they have two of these two things. You can remove it because Kator is now, um, because it depends on coroutines. So all the, all the requests you get is actually a coroutine. So coroutine is a, very, is a lightweight thread, right? So you probably will save your money if you want to use deploy Kator on um, Google App Engine compared to Spring, because you will not kick off that many threads, so <laughs> probably you save more. I know I didn't do the profiling, and you don't you don't need to add this task because this task will conflict will conflict with the application uh, plugin because they all have a task name run. So if you if you have if we have uh, JetBrain people here, please remove the sample. These two from simple, and you have add, you have to add these XMLs um, to let the Google App Engine know where is your uh, Kator application. So this is the the, way, the place I said when you uh, start when you download the simple project uh, the, the from, from the start starter dot uh, Kator .io, This is net, you you use Netty, and this is what they will give you. You want to remove it and change to Jetty, and then you can deploy to um, Google App Engine. So, <laughs> so you can imagine that if you want to do this manually, it won't work, right? <laughs> How do I know? I'm an Android developer. I don't know. I even don't know what Jetty and Netty is <laughs> before I start uh, writing any backend code. So, yeah, this is almost about everything about what I want to say about Creator right now. Um, this is the two talks I found is super useful if you want to try backend code if you are an Android developer. One is the mobile backend talk. Uh, so Ray gave a talk of using Spring, and Hari Hari Haridi used gave an another talk using Ktor. And uh, Ryan Harder, he gives a very deep dive about uh, not deep dive, but it will give you a more better explanation, better than me, to, <laughs> to let you know how to use Ktor. So the other part of my talk today is some lesson learned I learned from the server-side development when I'm doing Android development. Um, so first thing is the exception handling, okay? So we all read, we all read uh, effective Java, right? Item 60 favor the use of standard exceptions like illegal exceptions, illegal states, illegal state exceptions, etc. But in Android, we'll see a lot of code like this. 
like, okay, illegal, uh, some, uh, some exceptions, so uh, I throw exception very, like, very easily. And I, sometimes I, this is, this is a great example because you use the standard exception. Sometimes I, I just give you a random name. So uh, I, I will extend it and make it a better name. But I found it's very hard when I maintain my code. It's like I make exception as part of my business logic. So this is a good example. I'm not sure saying this is a bad example. I'm saying this is a good one, but I do it differently because I throw exception uh, using my uh, a custom exception very easily. So the, the, the exception is part of my business logic. If I remove all these sections, then my code will work. So don't do it. And I start, when I do start to server, I have a global exception handler. So every web framework has a global exception handler. Like Spring has one, I think um, K2 also has one. But don't abuse that, because you'll find your global exception handler will be very, very large. You, ha you need to handle a lot of different kind of uh, exceptions. The different exception types, types may very similar. If you wrote something and your, friend and your colleague say, mm, this, this exception is similar to mine, but at least with a little bit uh, tiny difference, it's very hard. So don't create your custom, custom uh, exceptions. Use the standard one. And uh, Colin doesn't have checked exceptions. So it's great. It gives you cleaner code. But if you really want to handle that, um, you need to look into the library that you use. For example, the library I sh like that I should show you is the disk error, disk error you cache. It will throw something. But if you don't try cache, then uh, Colin will not complain. But probably you want to do something around it if you, that will affect your business logic. So you need to click on every library. Know your library, right? <laughs> it's very important. You need to click every function that your library use and see what it will pop up, uh, you will throw. So there's a lot of things I want to go through. Like RAM is different. Like Android will only have a couple of hundred megabytes. <laughs> but in server side, you have a lot of gigabytes. Uh, and server in Android world have a lot, a, a lot of asynchronous code, right? But in server side, you can treat it as a sync or everything is synchronous, right? Um, you, in Android, you have to make sure that your app is killed anytime. So um, keep remember to save states, be, be, and because uh, your app will get killed and user come back, you won't see the similar thing. Server side never happen, right? You just you server just retry again. And error handling, which we just talk about, S but there are similar stuff like in, uh, in IOC. It's almost the same. So after I wrote, I wrote something in Spring, I found I myself uh, understand a dagger better. And testing is almost the same because you, when you're writing uh, application server server code, you have, uh, for example, you write Android code. You want to avoid application contact. Application contact. You want to avoid uh, Android dependency as as much as possible, right? But when you wrote, uh, for example, if you wrote. Um, Spring code, for example, a lot of things are annot annotated, so you can just you can just create the controller manually. In Android, you cannot control, you cannot create an activity manually, right? So there are a lot of similar things you want to talk about. So it's very similar. Um, I found I just need two months, then I can start write some production code. So the other thing is the notations use site targets. So we all know that uh, we all seen that before, right? This one file JVN names. So this file will compile to something that uh, you. And Java developer, uh, like more friendly to Java. You have fields and gets and parameters. What are those used? So there are, though, there are many selections. So th these options are Im important because Colin will generate the bytecode during compile time. And for example, the class, if you add some members in it, uh, it will generate getter and setter, right? And if you don't add the annotation, you don't know you, you don't add the you cite targets, and the uh, you the, the compiler doesn't know what is actually you are annotating at. You're annotated. For example, you are, are you what do you want to you do want me to annotate the field, or you want me to annotate the getter or the setter, right? So this kind of thing comes to a, a very they be trouble like when I use uh, like uh, a XML parser because this is RSS, RSS feed right, app, right? XML parser, I just say attribute, and I want this attribute to be uh, converted into like version. But it says must make a set or get method must be marked as a set or get method. So the uh, the compiler is confused, right? Um, so we want to apply the attribute annotation on version, but. Version is not a get or set. 
So what I did is I add the field. Add field or user side target. And then the server knows, OK, uh, you, want, you want me to target on that field. So if you don't say it, the, comp the, calling, comp the call calling process, when calling processing annotation, you will smartly, smartly, very smartly uh, decide it for you. Parameters or pro uh, constructor parameters, property or field. But for example, in this attribute, in this notation, it didn't say. It didn't give you any target. So the Java side, the, the definition side doesn't give you any target. So uh, the calling doesn't, it's not smart enough to choose the right one, right? So it has, you, you have to uh, write it manually at the user side. Okay, I'm not going to talk about Mario, but I'm, I'm really, I'm recently learning on Mario. So what I want, so for those who don't know what it is, um, it's not just, it, it's everything. It's, uh, it has synchronous and asynchronous, and it supports uh, Thrift and uh, gRPC. You want to talk, give, you want to look at the talk, it's over there. So when I want to uh, have a, a calling um, sample on Mario, I found first thing, uh, I convert the one of the sample. It says object man, and then for those who don't know object man is the way we uh, say singleton in uh, Kotlin. And it says, cast annotated with add configuration. This annotation, Spring Boot application, has an add configuration in it. Uh, cannot be final. So I need to make it op uh, open class. Uh, here, I have an exception. It says, type means match. Yeah, I require a string. You give me a string, a uh, knowable string. So I need to, what happened? I need to add, okay, uh, Elvis, Elvis operator. For those who don't know what Elvis operator is, it gives you a default um, a value if it's null. So that way it will be uh, non-knowable. So similar thing here is I have a, a configuration, but the class here, because in Kotlin, every class default is final. So I, have, I, I need to make it, make it open. After I make it open, I still have some errors like here. So what happened? Um, so it cannot this, the compiler cannot understand, the, cannot infer the type here. So I need to specify um, uh, the type here. So what I'm trying to say is there's some little bit little things you need to know when you uh, want to jump in from ser uh, server Java to server Kotlin. And here. What happened here? Firstly, I thought, hmm, I, I've learned that before. It must be a notation, right? <laughs> okay, what I'm trying to do is, he, is uh, here in uh, server-side world, uh, you use like JSR 330. It has a notation called size. And you will check the parameters when it's used. So I say the parameter pass in must be minimi minimal, sh should be three characters long, no larger than 10, min 10 characters long. If, if, that value is that, if that's invalid, I'm gonna throw this error message. So in this API endpoint, and I want to run this test, say hello spring, it's, la it's lar larger than three, it's smaller than 10, should be working, yes. And uh, larger than, it's smaller than three, so it should throw me an exception, but both of them didn't work. Even the happy case didn't work. So, oh, I know. I checked the log and I found, hmm, cannot stop class final. So you found a lot of server, server technologies, AOP and ASM and CG leaps. So what, what it means is you will do something like reflection at runtime. So Android developers, when you stop the breakpoints at uh, activity on create, and you start the activity, what you will see? You will see all the creation path from activity manager, probably from Zygo, Zygo to uh, activity manager and see activity on create. So you know everything, right? Everything is written in code. Everything is in compile time because Android doesn't have the luxurious for reflection. Reflection needs to read disk, and reading disk in the mobile phone is very slow, right? So we cannot afford that. Everything needs to be like most of things, better be compiled during compile time. But in server world, they have a large memory. Like 10 years ago when I do server-side de development, um, we, the, the server I, I run has six, 96 gigabytes. 96 gigabytes, you're, 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 you're hitting correctly. 96 gigabytes, it's like a Dell server or something. So we don't have, we cannot use refresh. A lot of techniques are um, 
uh, in service uh, uh, reflections. So you need to you need to supplicate it, but you cannot. So I'm a smart person. I add open. Yes, one of the tests says, but the other one doesn't. So what happened? He still give me saying, okay, I expecting two hundred, but give me four hundred. So what happened? So I add open to it. Say why? So I, when I found that okay, there must be something in the size annotation, right? I didn't figure it out. I just guessing. <laughs> so sometimes it works. Damn, why it works? Sometimes it works. Damn, why it, why it don't, doesn't work? I just don't know. But so this is something I I do it for just for fun. Uh, so this is the K2 route creation. You see, when I saying route, uh, when I saying route routing hello, and then I'm. I'm curious, why is this magic keyword? It's like a keyword, right? Actually, it's not. Actually, it's, a, it's an extension, mass, it's extension function. So if the extension function only has a lambda, you can move out the lambda and remove that uh, parenthesis. So it says feature or no. If it doesn't have this routing feature, so actually it's a feature. So if it doesn't have feature, and I install it. I'll install the feature and add a configuration in it. So what is configuration? So we see the configuration here is a lambda. So lambda is outside. The block, the blocks. So um, this is the way how you install the configuration. Oh, sorry. So I, I didn't mention that. So this block here is a bunch of configuration. So you can see when when uh, when you create a route, not like Spring. I think I have a Spring sample here. Yeah. So sorry, it's still Ktor. So. The, everything on the routing here is a configuration, is a configure, is a lambda. In Spring, when you create, when you want to instance um, a controller, actually it's giving it's giving you a reflection that calling detector saying is calling reflection present. Can I reflect it? It's the calling class, and it will inf it will it will uh, do a reflection and create a controller for me. So I I, I just do it for fun, but. If if I didn't if I I'm just guessing I'm looking at the result but if anyone can correct me please let me know or otherwise I'll be wrong forever. So um, in Spring handling okay so this is the creation the other thing is the handling the request okay so in Spring when you handle the request is you can imagine it's also invoke method invoke so it's also reflection it will the dispatcher will choose according to uh, what you annotate and uh, dispatch the value for you. In Colin, it's fun. It's suspension function. So <laughs> you don't know where it came from. So if anyone knows how to where the suspension call starts, please let me know. I'm still figuring it out as well. So it says it's a suspension function. So every method call in uh, K2 is a suspension function. So key ca take, the key takeaway here for um, is we, we talk about Ktor, uh, Ktor have introduced the Ktor request and response. We install, uh, introduce the features. One of the feature is uh, authentication, uh, or we talk about OS2 using Firefox account. We talk about Ktor ar architecture the routing part. Uh, we talk about a little, bit, a little bit about Google App Engine, how to deploy to it, and um, some backend development stuff for Android developers. Like exception handling is different um, in Android world. In Android, your repository doesn't have 10 view models, right? But in several world, your repository probably more than dozen or hundred, maybe uh, like consumers. So don't use exception to to uh, communicate with other people. <laughs> use a uh, response. So you can use seal class. Seal class is very useful. You can extend the seal class itself. So the the the, the good the good thing about seal class is uh, when you if your user use site is Colin, it will tr it will ask you to enumerate all the possible uh, seal class. So you you don't re, you, you won't forget to handle all, any of them, so use response, don't use exceptions to communicate. Uh, notation use site targets um, final renewable stuff in in uh, in, um, in Kotlin, and uh, there are some Spring uh, Maria K two th things just to let you know that you can do Kotlin in server world definitely for sure. So go try. Use the K two is uh, K two GK GK GAE samples. Use Groovy Grid on build script, otherwise you'll spend a lot of time fighting with the build script. And be careful to IntelliJ the latest version, because in the grid of build script, the, the, tab, the tab here, if you uh, accidentally click on the offline mode, offline mode is here. I don't know why they put offline mode outside. So you'll keep on, I cannot find my, 
come, uh, I, my, my dependency was just not won't update. So <laughs> be careful, don't touch that button. Um, Android Studio haven't had this button yet. So <laughs> Android developer, you're lucky. Thank you.